turn the spotlight on our studio audience as we hand over to our psychic medium, Nikki Allen. Hello, my darlings, and welcome to another Bedroom Guru. I'm like a bus. There hasn't been any for ages, and then suddenly there's a two within a couple of days. <laughs> That's not good, is it, calling myself a bus? No, it's not. I am answering a question from um, Sheik. Let's have a look. Sorry, I'm going to get your name wrong, aren't I? Let's have a look at what your name is. It's Shika Thakur, who's asking about how you block psychic abilities in four-year-old children. Um, and she's been very distressed with unknown spirits and past family loved ones coming through. Now, I honestly do feel that I've done a video on this already, right? But I've just scaled all my videos and there's quite a few and I can't find it. So I thought, oh, do you know what? I'll do it again. Now, children are born completely open to the spirit world. A lot of them, um, as you may see on TV programs, um, remember previous lives. They're totally open and still connected to perhaps their spiritual consciousness. They're connected to the infinite memories of their soul. And it's only through age, society, parental um, um, inclusion that allows them to kind of, well, not allows them, but creates this blockage or closure of their awareness of the spirit world. In my family, because we're all very spiritually aware, we, we don't encourage it, but we certainly honour it and we understand it and we talk it through with our younger kids. Um, all my nieces and nephews have had some sort of spirit contact um, over the years. Some still do and quite happy with it. Some have kind of come away from it a bit. So, you know, generally most children kind of disappear from this awareness well, by the age of about six, seven, and then pretty much forget it. If they're going to be an ambassador or if they are in a spiritual family, then it normally does come about again. Um, mine pretty much stayed with me my whole life, um, the same as my brother and all my family. Um, but we're talking about normal children that are not going to be spiritual ambassadors, that are just open to this the first you know, few years of their life. And it scares the bejesus out of um, their mums and dads, basically, especially if they're not spiritually inclined. And they're like, what the hell? You know, um, I had a lady that came to me once and said, no, my, my um, five-year-old boy is talking to my dead dad and he never met him and it's really freaking me out. And I think it freaks the parents out more. So, you know, if you're a parent watching this, don't freak out. Okay, this is a natural phenomenon. They are remembering perhaps previous lives or remembering, um, you know, their soul um, existence, right? So don't try and close that down. Um, and if they are seeing spirit people, 99.9% .9 of them are going to be your loved ones from the spirit world. It's very rare that you're going to get any, like, you know, random person drop in. Obviously, if you're in a home that's got a residential element going on of spirit phenomena, then yes, they're going to most probably, you know, pick up on the Victorian child that, like, plays in the corner. But more often than not, it's family. So, you know, don't scare your children and go, oh, my God, or freak out in front of them. OK, it's so, like, OK, you don't have to, like, you know, really encourage it. But then again, you don't have to freak out and make them feel like it's wrong. OK, because to be honest with you, if I had children, I'd be like, great. What did granddad have to say? Oh, that's really good. It's really good. It's really good that he's come to see you. That's lovely. You know, so a lot of your attitude towards your children um, will help this scenario. Because more often than not, as soon as they start going to school, as soon as they start doing, you know, stuff away from the home environment, it's going to go. However, there is that problem where you've got one of, especially with the millennium children and spiritually aware children now, you've got the problem of that they're getting it like every night. They're not getting any sleep and it's really interfering with their life. And this is what it sounds like with you, Shika, and other people that obviously have come to me. This is such a common thing. I, my God, I hear it so often. So you're not alone. I'll tell you that now, okay? Now, what do you do to stop it? If it is creating distress, if they are losing sleep, if it's becoming a bit too much, then these are the things I recommend you do, okay? What, it's the same as what I recommend really with an adult, right? You've got to own your energy. If a light is on, which this is the best way of describing it, right? When you are a spirit person, if you're like looking down on the, all the ether and looking down on the, the planet um, from wherever you are, 
and you're looking for this frequency to connect with just imagine it like we're all lighthouses imagine spirit people are like um, um sorry spiritually inclined people are like lighthouses right they you 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 basically shine a light a beam of energy and light to say i can connect with spirit people i'm aware of it and i'm conscious of it right and they home in on it so with children even though they're not actively working as a medium like i do they are saying i'm aware because i'm still open because nobody's told me to close down yet so i'm still a young beautiful infinite soul that's just open to any energy that comes to me right and i see that so they're in like a shop so if you imagine your mum your dad your nan your granddad your brother your sister think oh my god that they're going to hear me they're going to see me brilliant just so i can let everybody know that you know i'm here and i'm looking over you so they're going to zoom in on that energy and say hello don't worry don't be scared it's only me it's only auntie beryl i'm just here to say hello and you know, but the little kids are like oh my god and they're not getting much sleep so i totally get it okay so that's why they zone in they're not doing it to be um you know um nasty or haunting or any of that old pants they're basically there because they're excited because they can connect with the light in the energy of your family and they're like oh my god brilliant times i've seen it with my nieces and nephews it's been amazing and so basically um if it is starting to interfere then this is what you need to do i'm sure i'm sure i've done a video on this but we'll do it again anyway so um these are the fit, the first steps you need to take before getting anybody else like a medium involved, all right? I, that's the last thing you need to be doing, first of all, um, because you don't know you're getting in. You need to get a reputable one in anyway. But this is what you need to do. And this is what I tell adults. You need to own the energy, right? So first of all, what you need to do is, is when your daughter is not in the room, son's not in the room, go into their bedroom and sit down and have a chat. You're going to feel a weird weirdo doing it, right? But they can hear you. They can hear every word you're saying. So you need to sit down and go, look, it's lovely that you're coming to see Amelia. Let's just make a name up. It's really lovely. Thank you so much. But I think you're getting too overexcited because she is not getting enough sleep. You need to stop this now because, you know, it's affecting her school. It's affecting her learning. And it's just too much for her. All right. By all means, come in her dreams and visit now and then. But this is too much. So you've got to stop it, right? That's the first thing is verbally acknowledging your energy, verbally acknowledging the situation, because most of them go, oh my God, have we overdone it? Right? They don't think about that. They just, they got, you know, they're a spirit being. They just want to connect with the light um, that is their, you know, family member. What I'd also do as well is, I did this for my niece because she was getting lots of visitation. It was too much every night. It was too much. So this is exactly what I did. An amethyst stone is an excellent stone for many reasons it's a brilliant healer it's brilliant for all sorts of things as you'll know from me doing my um crystal of the week things i've done one of those for ages but not a lot of people watch it i don't know so anyway um basically the amethyst not only helps focus your third eye and helps you to connect up and do what you need to do but it also is an excellent protector of spirit visitation believe it or not with children so if she's old enough then put a and then she's not going to swallow it, obviously, or have a big one, then you can put it under the pillow. But I recommend putting an amethyst near the head, so it's near the third eye and the crown chakra, okay, near where they sleep. So an amethyst crystal, purple crystal, um, just Google it if you don't know about it, or, or find my amethyst video on here. And um, it also tells you how to charge it. I'm not going to waste time doing that, but it says on the other video. And place that near where she sleeps, up near her upper chakras, okay? So that basically acts as a stone that stops visitation. It kind of is there. And the intent that's set there is, I'm placing this stone here because we need to stop the visitation, please, guys. She needs rest, okay? And so the intent and the energy that is given out by this amethyst will let the spirit people know, right, okay, we're overdoing it. All right, that's the first thing. The second thing as well is, is that I knew that there was a lady from the house that used to live in the house at my sister's house that was also coming and visiting my niece as well as family loved ones. So what I did was is, you know, you don't have to go over the top with this, but I just put, I, I found, I sensed the area of where this lady was coming in. And so I put a, a bag of rock salt, right, in the window. So what I would do is I would put a bag of rock salt by a doorway, okay? 
um, for your daughter. Bag of rock salt. It's as old as time, you know, from years ago, millennia ago. Salt has always been used as a cleanser and a protector to do with all sorts of occult practices. So I would do that as well. What I'd also do as well is you need a visual thing that's going to be a protector. All right. So if your child is visually, uh, um, sorry, is verbally, you know, stating, oh, I keep getting all these people come, mommy, I want to go to sleep. Blah, blah, blah. God, guess what I've found? This is a magic, magic, and I say a dream catcher. Right. This is a magic, magic thing. It's called a dream capture. And what happens is, is that I'm going to put it up in the window or wherever you want to put it. Right? I'll put it above their head on the on the ceiling. And what happens is that any people that want to come and visit you or any bad dreams, they get sucked into that dream capture and it's keep you safe. So what you're doing is with that is, is you're psychologically preparing your child for thinking nobody's going to come to me nobody's going to come to me it's all about you know intent and what we put in and put out of our minds and our energy is we don't realize how strong that is to the other ethereal planes our intent is huge and they hear it this is why i talk about you know when you're cosmic ordering they hear it when you statement things that um, are negative they hear that as well and so a little child is just going to think oh good they're not going to come to me now they won't come to me because that's here and even though it's a bit of a trick putting it up there because there's nothing magical in a dream catcher psychologically that child is putting out to the universe and to spirit world oh good you're not going to visit me now because i've got that here so they almost block it off for themselves without even knowing it does that make sense so get something that visually tells them that's not going to happen also i've recommended in the past um that this kid loved angels and fairies right and so i said get archangel michael like he's a protective warrior and he's got a sword and so she put um a statue a little statuette thing in fact i came to my guys guess what and he's gonna stop anybody coming in here as well because he's got a big mighty sword and he protects you and so this child was totally good i'm protected now by archangel michael without even knowing it, he's invoked an archangel do you see what i mean so visual representation of stopping visitation affecting the psyche of your child again will stop most visitations okay those first steps will normally nip it in the bud from you talking from the crystal rock soul and a, a physical representation of something that protects the child um you're normally going to be smashing it i've never had anybody come back and say i've still got a problem to be fair after that um if it then goes continues then obviously you need to get someone in that knows what they're doing and for Christ's sake, get someone in that knows what they're doing. Um, so you need someone that's reputable, good word of mouth, blah, 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 blah. OK, so don't get any old twat in because, oh, yes, I can do this. I can do that. And they charge you. God knows most good mediums. If you're saying your child's getting visited a lot, or come around your house, either charge petrol money or nothing at all. That's what I did. They said, oh, it's going to cost £200 to clear this. Tell them to do one. <laughs> so spiritual, am I? Um, so... Yeah, I tell you what, try that and anybody else try that if their children are seeing people that have passed over. But this is only if it's affecting their lives and, you know, affecting their sleep. If it's just now and then nanny comes in to say hello, just enc not encourage it, but honour it because that's a magical thing. God, I would love to have a child that's half in the spirit world and half out because it gives them the comfort and the knowledge to know they're not alone throughout their life. You know, so don't start, don't, don't stop their natural abilities because of your fear. Okay, that's the most important thing is don't, don't project your fear and your worry and your belief system on your child if they're seeing spirit people. But as I said, if it is affecting them mentally, um, emotionally, and obviously sleep and all the rest of it, then yes, take the steps that I've mentioned. Um, if you're going to get a medium in, as I said, it's got to be a reputable one. Um, that can come in and have a chat with spirit people and say, look, you're overdoing it a bit too much and then just clear the energy, perhaps sage it um, and do their thing. But I I would say the highest percent over the years that I've been doing these for 30 odd years and normally the first steps work. So um, I hope this helps, Shika, and everybody else that's going to, uh, has got this problem and looks at this video. Um, it really isn't a scary thing. Your child isn't in danger. You know, I know you get all this scary stuff on the telly, but it isn't like that. 
trust me when I tell you that 99% of the people that love your child and they're going to be your family members that just want to let them know um, that they're safe and well and that they're looked after. Unfortunately, they do get a bit too um, energetic with that and they get you know, they get too excitable and they perhaps visit too much than they think they should. Um, so let me know how you get on. If you've still got issues after a couple of weeks of doing this, then get back to me, Shika, and anybody else and we can go from there. OK, so that is how you protect your child from getting too much spirit visitation. I'll speak to you very soon. God bless.